All right, what is up guys? My name is Brian and I work for an artist named of Kluvi. So today I'm going to be showing you guys a step-by-step -step approach to how to make beautiful piano melodies. This can work for lo-fi, can work for actually any genre um, if you use it correctly. And the whole process revolves around this super easy trick so that the melody doesn't sound, you know, like super repetitive or boring, but it still sounds catchy. And also before we get into the video, I just want to ask you guys to please subscribe to the channel. I know I said this before, but this is a lo-fi dedicated channel, guys. So if you're interested in lo-fi, either as like a producer or simply just a listener, I would highly recommend you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the tips. But yeah, hope you guys find this video useful and let's get into it. So before we start, I'm going to show you guys the melody that we're going to be making today. Now from the start, I know like this looks super complex, but I promise by the end of the video, you guys are gonna be like making this kind of stuff no problem on your own. So first let's start with the chord progression. So this is a basic chord progression that I used. Um, I have C major, G major, A minor, and then F major. If you guys don't know what that means, you can literally just Google chord diagrams and they show you like what notes are in each chord. So you can just click it in on FL Studio. But yeah, um, you guys can either use this chord progression or if you want something more different, um, you can, again, Google chord progressions and they give you like a list for like, I don't know, you can Google emotional chord progressions, sad, happy, whatever, and they'll give you like a whole bunch. Now, one thing that I actually used to do for chord progressions is I would look up chord progressions for songs that I actually liked. Um, I mentioned this in the previous video, but whatever songs that you guys want to look up, you can also look that up and they'll give you the chord progression, I'm sure. And that can actually be helpful because when you use chord progressions from songs you like, you can actually base the melodies also from the original song. So that can help you like form ideas a little easier. Now, another thing I want to cover is actually changing the chords themselves. And I don't mean like changing like D major to like E major. I actually mean this. So I think this is called voicing. I'm not exactly sure, but what it pretty much means is you're moving the chords around so that they make room for the melody. So as you can see here, um, this chord used to be over here, but I moved it up. So we have more room in the bottom and it's a lot more relative to this first chord over here. And yeah, before we have this. And now we have this. So yeah, um, you can move the notes around in the chord as long as they're the same notes. So like, so like you can move it up an octave, down an octave, they will still be the same chord, just invert it. But yeah, so we're going to use this chord progression here and now we're going to make the melody on top of it. Now the melody is something you're actually going to have to do on your own. But if I were to give a tip on making melodies, I would recommend that you actually use the notes and the chords themselves. So a lot of times I see people um, have the chords right here and then they would like make a whole new melody on top. And that's fine sometimes, but I feel like me personally, I like to keep the melody a little closer to the actual chords themselves. And in this case, I would actually use the same notes from the chords to make the melody. So if you see here, I have the G from the C major chord, and then I move from the G to the C note and then back to the G from the inverted um, G major that I told you about earlier. And so that's how we made this melody. Another tip I would recommend doing when making melodies is check like the movement of the melody. Again, this is not an official like tip because I didn't measure in music theory. I don't know much about it, but I like to think of melodies as like moving constantly. So in this case here, in these four bars, you can see that the melody constantly like tries to move up. So it goes like, so it goes like C, D, E, and then C, D, E, G. And that's an like upward trend for the overall like four bars. So logically, if I'm moving upward for the four bars, I would probably want to move back down for the next four bars. And now this is where the interesting trick comes in. So if you see here, I have this part and I have this part. Now this part, if you guys have noticed, is literally this part, but just an octave like down. Um, I can show you guys again. So we have the melody that I made earlier. And then all I'm gonna do is copy and paste over here and then drag it down an octave. And it's the exact same thing. So now that you did this, you have all this room up here so you can make the melody that's going back down. 
And now you might be wondering, why do you have to do this? Can't you just like copy the same chord progression here, here, and then just make the new melody on top of it? And so let me play you guys both versions, one where I did the trick and one without the trick so that you guys can hear the difference. So this is without the trick. So this is just the same chord progression. I didn't move it down an octave or anything. And I just have the new melody on top. And now this is the version with the trick involved. So as you see, me personally, I feel like this version sounds a lot more full, a lot more interesting. And now when you actually make a song, you usually like don't just put a melody on top of the chords and call it. Um, you have like a thing called a melody, which is like the catchy part, and then the harmony, which is like the supporting role for the melody. Now I'm sure there's official ways to actually make a harmony and all that stuff, but for people like me who don't actually know music theory, you can involve this exact same trick to get the same effect pretty much because you have all these like notes here. So pretty much what is happening in this part is you have the main melody, which was here, acting as a harmony for the second melody up here. And that's what's making this like second part sound a lot more like full and interesting. So yeah, that's the step-by-step -step approach to how to make this overall melody. And then pretty much I just have the drums here. And then I added like the wave effect from like a beach or an ocean or something. So pretty much you get this. But yeah, that's it. So I just want to emphasize that I'm actually not an expert in the piano. Um, pretty much all I know about the piano is what key plays what note. And in fact, when I made this like melody, because this is a song that I made like a long time ago, but when I actually made this melody, I didn't even have my MIDI keyboard yet. Um, so I just clipped everything in. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys this trick because for me personally, um, I would sometimes get ideas for melodies, but it was just overwhelming to like try to get it out on the computer. So hopefully by using this step-by-step -step approach, you guys don't have the same problem. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, I also hope you guys are enjoying your holidays. Also, if you found this video useful and haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure to do so. And yeah, thanks for watching.